to another tutorial video. This time around, we're going to be discussing the football field valuation template in Excel. And just to be clear what we're referring to here, this is something that you see used in corporate valuations all the time. Usually you'll see some type of slide like the valuation summary where the bank or other firm analyzing and valuing the company lines up all the different valuation methodologies and then shows the company's current share price or other current value relative to the output of those methodologies. So we're going to go through this and show you how to replicate this in Excel. Now, you can find a lot of templates for football field valuation charts online, but most of them suffer from a few key problems. Even some of our previous coverage of this topic had some issues, so we're going to correct it, update it, and give you a better template today in version 2.0 of this tutorial. So what is a football field valuation? Like I said, it lets you quickly see a company's valuation across different methodologies, such as public comps, precedent transactions, and a DCF, and how the company's current share price compares to all of them. You can see our version right here, and this one would tend to imply that the company seems quite overvalued according to most of these methodologies because it's far above the outputs from the public comps and precedent transactions. Valuation is sort of like a trip to the doctor's office. The holistic results, your overall results, matter a whole lot more than any single number or single method used to evaluate you. So if a company looks overvalued everywhere, it probably is. And if it looks undervalued everywhere, it probably is. Of course, most companies are somewhere in the middle, but this type of football field valuation chart lets you resolve some of the ambiguity around it. Now, the basic setup is not really that complicated. You, you could either create a stacked bar chart in Excel or in a more traditional method, you can create a high, low, close stock chart using the graphing features in newer versions of Excel. If you use the high, low, close stock chart one, it'll look something like this, where you have the bars on screen, you have the low point and the high point for each methodology, you have the difference between them, and then you just create a graph. If you go to change chart type here in Excel, you can see that this is a stock chart and the type is high, low, close. And if you look at where the data is coming from, we're literally just taking it from below this area. So it's very easy to create this type of chart. However, this type of chart also has a few downsides. First of all, this one shows the bars vertically rather than horizontally. It's easier to set it up like that, but it's also less flexible. Also, most templates don't support percentile ranges for different methodologies. So you can't easily see the 25th to median and the median to 75th percentile or the minimum to 25th percentile or the 75th percentile to maximum in these types of charts. But banks do that all the time in real life. Going back to our image here, they don't show percentiles on this chart, but you could see how you could easily add it if you just extend these bars to the left or right. And then the third problem is that most templates do not include support for a dynamic share price line that updates on the graph when the company's current share price changes. So we're going to give you a template that fixes these problems and makes the graph more dynamic for model update purposes. For example, in our version, if we change the company's share price to 90, it automatically updates on the graph and changes positions. So that's what we want to be working to in this exercise. Let's go through the basic process first and learn how to set up the basic chart, and then we'll go through a second st set of steps here to set up the dynamic share price line. Now, to get started with this exercise, I'm going to delete much of the work that we already have here, and I'm also going to delete the graph as well, just to prove to you that it really is as simple as I'm saying for the most part. So we've deleted all of that. We have the company here, Walmart, we have their current share price. The first step of this process is that you need the output of all the valuation methodologies across the different percentiles. This is not part of the lesson. We're assuming that you already have a separate valuation file that outputs the implied share price or the company's implied value as a whole across these different methodologies. And we covered this in some of our valuation tutorials, comparable company analysis tutorials, and others like that. Once you have that, then you have to calculate the distance between each point, starting with the 25th percentile minus the minimum. These will be the segments in the bar chart. So let's go in and do that right now. The min points here will just be the minimum. The 25th point will be 25th percentile minus the minimum. And then we can copy that across for the others. And then let's copy this down to all these. And we have that. 
So you have that for a basic setup. Then we'll create a stacked bar chart by highlighting the data in Excel and then going to insert chart, selecting stacked bar chart and adding it like that. So let's just select all this data. I'm not even using keyboard shortcuts for this because it doesn't really make a huge difference here. We're only going to be inserting this chart once per file in most cases. And we want to go and we want to get the stacked bar chart right there. So let's take that and then just drag it all the way up to the top. And we'll make that a bit bigger so we can see everything there. And so we have that. So we have the basics of our chart in place now, but of course we have a few problems here, such as with the formatting, the colors, the axes, all of that. The next step here is to right click this, go to select data, and then edit horizontal axis labels and link to the labels for the actual methodologies. So I'll right click this, I'll go to select data, and then here for horizontal axis or horizontal category axis labels, I'll go to edit, and then we'll go here and we'll select all of these. So we have that. And we can see there's a slight mismatch here. Let me change this cell to 36 instead so this matches up properly. And so we have that and we have the proper labels for these methodologies now, although the formatting is still quite bad. Now in step 1.5, we want to apply some formatting to hide the bars that we don't want to see. So for example, often we show only the 25th to 75th percentile. We can also add some labels. We can change the colors and fonts. We can add access titles. Really the sky is the limit here in terms of the formatting, but I'll show you a few quick and simple things that we could do. So first off, to hide some of these bars, generally speaking, we only like to show the middle of the graph. So roughly around the 25th percentile to 75th percentile is usually what we like to display in these types of graphs. So let's go in and start hiding some of these. I'll start by right clicking the series and then go to format data series. And then for the fill color, I'll go down to fill and I'll say no fill right there. And then we'll do the same thing for this top bar, the one that corresponds to max point right there. And then we should also go over to this other series where we go up to the 25th point here. If you think about this, this really represents the distance between the minimum and the 25th percentile. So this isn't exactly at the 25th percentile yet, it's just below the 25th percentile. And therefore we usually want to hide this series as well. So I'll go to no fill for this one. So we have that. Now to fix the colors on the chart, we could do a couple different things, but I can just change the fill color here and we can make it blue instead. And we can make this one blue as well if we want. And that would be one way to fix it right here. And then once we have that, we could do a lot of other things. So we could change the font size here to 12 to make it a little bit easier to read. We can change the font color here to black to make that easier to read. For the chart title, once again, we can change this to black. And for this one, I already have the chart title over here on the side where it says Walmart Inc valuation range of implied share prices. So we can just link to that directly. That's already in the Excel file. So we now have our title and this will update dynamically based on the contents of that cell. And then in terms of other things, we can go to chart design and then add chart element. And for the legend, we can make it appear on the right side of the screen instead. So we have that. We can also change these names a little bit. And for series three, I'll say 25th to median. And then for series four, I'll say median to 75th. So we have that. And then for the others, we can actually just delete these. So I'm literally, I'm just physically deleting these within the legend. And so we have that. And then at this point, looking at our graph and zooming out a little bit, we could make it a little bit bigger and extend it more to the right side here. So it's a bit easier to see things. We could also keep going in and fixing the issues with the fonts and changing them to size 12 and do that down here for the share prices as well. I like to format the bottom area of the chart by going to format access and then going to number. And I like to change this to currency so that we see the 0.00, .00 in the very beginning like that. And I think you get the idea by now. So we could keep going like that. If you wanna know how to add the labels for the different methodologies, unfortunately, there's not a great way to do this in Excel. So I often just go and insert text boxes to accomplish this. And I could say comparable public companies. And the advantage is this way, we, you can, we could format it separately from everything else on this graph. 
So we could change the font color here to blue, for example. And so we have that. And we could go down and we could do this for all the other ones as well. We could do it for the precedent transactions and for the DCF analysis. But I think you get the idea by now of it with how to set up this graph. So believe it or not, this is actually the easy part. Let's now go into step two and add the company's current share price to the graph to make it dynamic and avoid that issue with having to manually change the line and update the share price whenever the share price changes. I'll warn you in advance that if you're using a much older version of Excel, such as anything before Excel 2013, this is probably not gonna work. Sorry, but I do not yet have an alternative solution for these older versions of Excel. So step two, adding the dynamic share price line. We have to start by creating a dummy series for the current share price under the main data area. We're going to do this in the min to max columns, and then we'll enter a thousand, and then zeros after that in the other columns to the side. So let's go down and do this, and where we see current share price right here, we'll link to Walmart's current share price. We have that, and then just we'll just enter some dummy values over here on the right-hand side. So I'll say a thousand, and then zero after that. So we have that, that's step one. The second step here is that we have to right click the graph, go to select data, and then go to add under legend entries, select the name for the current share price, and then the values, which is that min to max range that we just entered with all the same share price. So I will right click this chart, I'll go to select data, and then under legend entries series, I'll go down and for the name, I'll select the current share price right there. And then for the series values, I'm going to select these share prices right here. And so we have that. So we have the editor graph. As you can see, it looks a bit odd right now, but it's okay. We're going to fix that. We now have to manually change the series formula so that it has both X and Y values, which is the tricky part of this whole process. And you can see my version of it down here. Let's go into Excel and take a look at this. So right now, if you look closely at this formula, the first part gives us the name. Then we skip over one part of the X and Y values here. We just have a double comma. And then we just have one set of values and we have a six at the end. We're going to change this so that we have a range of values for both of these. So I'm going to select the ones over here. We have that. And then I'll change this last part to one. And so now we have that displayed on the graph. Now this graph looks quite messed up right now, but it's okay, we will fix that. There is a method to the madness here. Now we're going to right click the current share price bar in the graph, go to change series chart type, select scatter with smooth markers that'll automatically create a secondary access and then click okay. This is the part that was probably not going to work if you're using older versions of Excel because they changed around how the graphing functionality worked there. In any case, if we right click this bar physically in the graph and then go to change series chart type, Let's change this one to scatter with smooth lines. And you can see the secondary axis there is automatically checked when we do that. And now this graph is starting to look better, but we're still not all the way there. We still have some issues with the horizontal axis labels, which have now been lost because of the fact that we changed the graph type. So we're gonna to go to select data. For the first blank series, we'll change, it to the, we'll change the horizontal axis labels to the names on the left-hand side, and then we'll click okay. So, right click the graph, go to select data. And then for the first series here, series one, we want to change the horizontal or category axis labels to everything down here. And now we have that set up and in place. And you can see how each one lines up with its appropriate methodology now, and our labels have been restored. Then we can fix the secondary axis by right clicking it, going to format axis and changing the minimum to zero and the maximum to a thousand. The issue here is that the line doesn't extend all the way from the top to the bottom here, because by default, when you do this, Excel adds about 20% extra space on the top and on the bottom of the secondary axis. So if we right click and go to format axis, let's change the minimum here to zero instead, and let's change the maximum to a thousand instead. And now we have a dynamic line that extends all the way from the top to the bottom right here. And now we can change the color and we can remove the secondary axis. So here I'll just right click the data series, go to format data series, 
And then for the fill, we can change this to red, for example, if we wanna make it really stand out and be visible. And we can actually hide the secondary axis right here. I'll go to chart design, add chart element, and then for axis or axes, I will go to secondary vertical and click that to uncheck it and hide it from our graph. And now we have something like the football field chart that I showed you in the beginning. Now the formatting here is not quite as nice because I didn't add all the data labels on the side. We could add a bar at the bottom of the chart, but it's pretty close to what we had in the beginning. And this is really all you need to know to create these types of football field charts with dynamic lines for the share prices in Excel. Let's do a recap and summary now. At a basic level, you start by calculating the distances between percentiles from the output of your valuation methodologies. You create a stacked bar chart for those, and then you format that stacked bar chart appropriately using colors, data labels, changing the fonts, font colors, and so on. To add the dynamic share price line, you have to create a dummy series for the current share price, add it to the chart, then add X and Y values for it by manually modifying the series formula in the chart. Then you change it to a scatter plot chart type. You add back the horizontal axis labels for the rest, and then you can fix and hide the secondary axis and apply other formatting, and that's the trick. You are essentially getting Excel to create a type of combo chart that does not exist natively in Excel, but which it does recognize if you set it up correctly and follow the steps in this exact order. And now you have a more useful graph. You can grab the template for yourself right below this video, experiment with it, and then use it in your own valuations.